Hi everyone, Jane's Mantle here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, it's yet another episode of Iconic Brunettes. Yes, our Iconic Brunette this episode is Donna Summer. Yes, the queen of disco herself. Oh my God, I love Donna Summer, you guys. You understand, like I grew up listening to this music. My mom was a disco freak, so was my father. Like. They both love disco so much. So we constantly had these records playing in my house. So like I go way, way, way back with Miss Donna Summer. This I know. Okay. And I'm excited to do this because she's had so many unique hairstyles. They're usually really bang heavy, but I love that good old fashioned, just super curly with the curl poodle bangs. Oh, it's to die for. So we are going to do Donna Summer today. Now, I got this wig here. It's a human hair wig. And it was actually a gift from Yuhua Hamasaki. And it came with really tight curls. I have since taken the curls out and then realized I wanted to do on summer. So I made a lot more work for myself than I needed to when I could have honestly made the hairstyle with that curl pattern. So we're going to put the curls back in the wig. I love my job. So here we go. Let's get started. Oh, first things first, I got to heat protect the hair. I forgot. It's human hair. So I can't just dive right in as I normally would with synthetic hair. Thank you, Yuhua. Miss Donna Summer. She has always been a very deeply religious woman. I do know this about her. Like her singing all started in the church. And like as a little girl, she always wanted to sing in the choir. And as the story goes, she had gotten the chance to basically do a solo. And everyone in the church was laughing at her like, yeah, right, like what is this little girl gonna do? And the second she opened her mouth and started singing, she blew the people in the church away. Like she had a beautiful voice. And this unlocked something in her and young Donna to realize, I need to be a singer. Not only that, I know I'm gonna be a singer and I know I'm gonna be famous. Like she just knew intuitively that like, this is what she needed to be doing and this is what she was put on earth to do. So cut to young Donna Summer. She is wandering through New York City. And basically Donna Summer's roots are in the church one, but also in the theater. She was very, very big in the theater scene and got cast in a production of the great, great, great hippie musical, Hair. Now, when the producers asked her what city she'd like to go to, she mentioned that she always wanted to go to Germany. So she ended up doing a touring production of Hair in Germany where she would meet one of her husbands, whose name is not important. All I have to say is that the relationship was a tumultuous one, which is a running theme in a lot of Donna Summer's life. A troubling time when it came to picking men until she eventually found one that treated her right. This particular man took her all over and like he even was with her when she was like reaching the heights of her career. Like Donna Summer was cutting records here and there and it wasn't until she had basically done like a goof, like she didn't have the song even written. It was called Love to Love You and she only had one verse written. And she recorded as a goof and thought nothing of it. It managed to make its way over to a producer at Casablanca Records, where he was enamored with the sound and decided he wanted to cut a whole record out of it. And it ended up being like a 17 minute long song, where it's really just Donna Summer billing and cooing over a record. Like she mentioned, she was kind of channeling like Marilyn Monroe or somebody like that because she herself did not see herself like this. Like this sex kitten, sex bomb image was so not her. Like she was very goofy and she didn't take things that seriously. And she thought, oh, this is definitely not the kind of artist I want to be. And so much so like this song was a monster success. So much so like controversy started to surround her. Donna Summer's image was embroiled in being like this naughty sex kitten kind of girl. And she was nothing of the sort. And it even got to the point where like it soured the song to her. Like she hated performing it. And it would cause riots in some cities. Like it was so controversial and the churches hated it. But this was the image that was Donna Summer that she was coming into. And it would eventually lead to other songs in a similar vein, like Bad Girls. Oh my God. Like some bangers were made in this era, okay? And one community that really attached themselves to her that loved disco music was the gay community and donna summer's records were throughout the gay community okay like it was such a thing drag queens took to her so fast but we'll get there okay we're gonna get to that a certain song in particular especially songs like bad girls on the radio 
like these amazing songs where it's like a mixture of like ballad that goes into like dance. So good. Like she had such a unique voice too. It's like velvet put to record. Like no one could sing like Donna could. This would culminate into her eventually getting a part in a small film called Thank God It's Friday. Now this movie isn't great. And it was not a monstrous success in the veins of like, you know, a Grease or anything like that. It was a comedic musical comedy. And Donna Summer basically plays a singer who tries to steal the show. But what would come out of this movie that has since surpassed the popularity of it and has become its own entity in itself is the song Last Dance. Now, this song is an absolute banger. All right, like of all Donna Summer's discography, this is the one that like, it's the, it's the show closer, okay? Every artist hopes they get a song like this. And Last Dance is that song. And her contributions to the drag world have never been top since. Nothing closes a show like Last Dance. Nothing basically makes a statement in a pageant like Last Dance. Like you cannot undo what you have just, the gift you have just given to drag queens. Donna Summer left her mark with Last Dance. It is that good. <laughs> the 1970s were by far her most successful era because it was the time of disco. And dance music was so popular. Like, if you think about how popular dance music was, disco was really like such a unique, beautiful thing. Like people of all ranges were going out to discos and dancing. Like straight men, gay men, everyone was going out to dance in these discotheques. They were such a huge thing. But the downside of that is with the good comes the sour. And there were some people that basically made careers out of being disco haters. And as soon enough, that kind of rhetoric was going to take over and become basically the thing that everyone, you know, decided disco was awful and it had to be out. Disco is now out. I'm not going to name the DJ because he doesn't deserve to get named. But when you think about the level of chaos that came out from this, like his whole rhetoric was, I don't like that people get all dressed up and go out and dance to these meaningless, love, these love songs and basically like a real emphasis on people just going out and having a good time. In cell vibes. While he just stands there in a club and doesn't know how to dance and doesn't know how to have fun. Like that was his whole preface. So, but when you think about the underlying themes of that statement is, it's like, who were the target demographic for disco music? And who were the top artists? It was a predominantly black genre and a predominantly gay followed genre. So, homophobia, racism, it all played a part in the hatred of disco. And when eventually they had the disco riot in Chicago where they brought all their disco records to be demolished and caused a huge riot, the statement was made. And unfortunately, disco did fall out of favor, but disco never went away. And certainly Donna Summer did not go away. Donna Summer instead decided long before disco was even starting to fall out of favor that she wanted to change genres anyway. Like she wanted to retool her sound to be something completely different. And in her upcoming albums, she would experiment more and more and more. Like she would add gospel elements, rock elements. And come the 1980s, she would have another big hit called She Works Hard for the Money. Another banger. <laughs> you sense a theme, like Miss Donna Summer has a catalog. She Works Hard for the Money is like the working woman's anthem of the 80s. Whenever you think of those old like 80s montages for like women in business, this song is on, okay? Women are popping off their, their tennis shoes and putting on their high heels because they just entered the office. That kind of vibe. The shoulder pads are in. And like, when you think about the way her music affected people, like it inspired so many artists. Not to mention like the subject matter was trivialized at that time. Like even the reviews for Thanks Guys Friday, like critics would say like, well, she's no Diana Ross and she's kind of classless, like things like that because of her reputation of being, you know, a naughty girl singer. But the doors she opened for like talking about female sexuality and female empowerment, women ca like carving out their own course in the world, it really is not surprising. She was so influential to so many artists, like, you know, Selena, Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, like, all these amazing female artists have roots in Donna Summer's music and being inspired by it. Now the 80s proved to be a difficult time for Donna Summer hit wise. She would start off the decade strong, but come the middle of it, more controversy would hit Miss Donna Summer's career. Her last couple albums had stopped performing in the way that they'd want it to. Like she wasn't getting gold records anymore. 
and the one she had released failed to produce a hit. And on top of this, a nasty, ugly, ugly rumor came out about her. Mind you, this is back before the days of social media, but the canceling happened and happened hard for her. When this happened, to give you context, it was the height of the AIDS epidemic, okay? Mid 80s. And Donna Summer is the queen of the gays as far as gay music goes. Huge crux of her fan base, especially during the late 80s when she was starting to fall out of favor in popular music. A lot of her concerts were made up of this kind of audience. An article was published stating that she had made remarks during one of her concerts that exactly what she said was, AIDS was God's form of punishing gay people and that it's, she was taught it's Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. Now, when you think about these kind of comments made about someone like Donna Summer, whose core audience was gay men, it did irreparable damage to her like career. And she had spent a huge chunk of her life afterwards proving this wrong and saying it did not happen. Like this was an ugly rumor started about her and there was no proof. And she even sued the outlet for making these stories about her because it did horrible damage to her. So much to the point that like when she was booked to perform a performance for an AIDS benefit, ACT UP actually protested it because we were led to believe that this was fact. And like, it's crazy, like the amount of things that could just be said about somebody that people would just run with and believe even without proof. And she apologized for this the rest of her life, even though it didn't happen. All right, now, I've got a good start with these curls. Believe it or not, I have to curl the rest of this wig and it's gonna take forever. So I'll be right back after the other side is done and we'll start working on our bangs. All right, be right back. <laughs> All right, we are back. Now I have the whole wig curled and I ran a comb through it too, just to get some of the curls to break up. I might have to recurl some sections, but that just comes with the territory. I pre-cut one of the bangs. I already just took a whole leap into it, just cut it. It's fine, it is what it is. It's a human hair wig, but it's not gonna grow back. But what I can do is I could always use it for like a different hairstyle, like someone with more bang centric kind of hair, like a Betty Page or something. So we're just gonna dive right in and cut the bangs. Now con the 90s, Donna Summer was starting to have a bit of a resurgence. Like as soon as the 90s and 2000s were rolling about, she was doing a few things in her career that like really put her right back in the public's attention. Like she had guest starred on Family Matters, and it was a big splash, like such a nostalgia boost for a lot of people at that time, like the parents that were watching that with their kids. Not to mention her influence was undeniable. Like people were starting to rediscover her music from having children and enjoying her music in their youth to show their kids their own music. One of the most influenced by Donna Summer would have to be Selena Quintanilla, who famously recorded a whole medley of Donna Summer hits in her final concert. And it was like a dream realized for her because she adored Donna Summer. And for her, she always wanted to be on a huge stage performing the songs of her childhood that she just adored. Not to mention like people were starting to give Donna Summer her flowers again. Like a lot of the controversy surrounding like the things that she did not say were starting to die down somewhat. Things were being printed, things were being put in print to let it be known like what was actually factual and what was actually a rumor. So they're trying their best to basically squash it. And by that time, she was inducted into the Dance Music Hall of Fame, which is like well-deserved. And unfortunately, come the mid 2000s, she passed away from cancer and a legend was lost. Like, I didn't really quite understand the brevity of it until I'm much older. Like I was still kind of a teenager and didn't really quite understand just how important her music was. But doing research on this, like having the nostalgia boost of it all, it's like, I do remember listening to these songs all the time. Like on family road trips and stuff, like her music was so, it's like such a soundtrack to my life as it was for many people. Even like the really like soft candy ones, like she works hard for the money. Like I just remember them. And I remember adoring these songs and like singing bad, singing along to them horribly. <laughs> like she created a soundtrack to our lives that is not going to be forgotten. She was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame later on, much so deserved. And it's a sad moment that like she didn't live long enough to like see that and really like, you know, make her victory lap for her career that she truly deserved. She was taken from us far too soon and really deserved to have that moment in the sun where people sang her praises. But like her impact lives on. Like you cannot deny the power that a song like On the Radio has or MacArthur Park. Like how bizarre it is. And the fact that like this was a number one hit at one point in time. 
Like only she could sing that song and make it a hit. And I love this era of her music, even though if you like listen to Donna Summer talk in her own words, she didn't really quite know how to be this persona that was thrust upon her. Like Love to Love You was not something she initially would have sang. She did it as a goof. Like it was initially just an idea for another singer to sing, like an Andrea True or somebody that had that kind of image. She never saw herself as being very sexy or anything like that. She saw herself as being very comical. And she ended up, you know, it was drag, honey. She played the part of this sex kitten, even though she was nothing like that. And she played it so convincing that like, people bought into it and just wanted more of it. I also think it's how adorable it is to like go onto a cruise for work and come back and you're an international superstar. That happened to Donna Summer. Like Love to Love You exploded and she had no idea until she returned home and saw rotting flowers on her doorstep. People sending their praises for this amazing song. She had no idea it was even a hit. It was just flown to America and entering a new life of being a superstar. All right, I'm just gonna smooth it out and I'll be right back with the final results. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh my God, you guys, this is the final result. And I feel like my mother. <laughs> I look like my mom. Like she used to have hair like this all the time, like the center part with the little cut bangs and like the waves and I'm like, ugh. It's very my mom in high school and throughout my whole childhood, she had this hair. I'm kind of obsessed, like I don't know. I've never really wore hair like this, so bear with me, okay, while I feel myself. <laughs> yes, I love it. And I love that we were able to pay homage to the wonderful Donna Summer and legend icon, the queen of disco, okay? You better put some respect on Ms. Donna's name, okay? Ms. Donna Summer, she is everything and more, okay? And I adore this. This is on the radio album cover here. Iconic, my absolute favorite look of hers and my favorite song from her on the radio. So yes, yeah, like, oh, so dramatic, so good. I want to go and lip sync. Like I put this on and I was like, I feel like I have to go out and lip sync now. <laughs> I feel like that's every queen that puts on a Donna Summer wig. Like, like, oh, I have to go and do like four numbers now. Be right back. <laughs> I adore it. And I'm so glad we got to honor Donna Summer in iconic brunettes. If there's another brunette you want to see, please let me know down below. I'm always taking them into consideration. I saw some folks mention Donna Summer. So I saw it as like, oh, I liked it and thought, hey, why not? And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and see me try out BOMO Beauty by Bob the Drag Queen and Monet Exchange. Or see what happens when AI picks a wig for me to style. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll leave your cake out in the rain. So click it.